Radiant Team Ban. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the American Dota 2 League. It is day one of season two. It's great to be back here on twitch.tv slash American Dota League. We've got a lot of great American action coming your way, but we are going to start things off with Osiris Gaming and No Earth Spirit. Of course, thanks for joining us. My name is Ma, and joining me tonight, none other than Kyle Guy. How are you, sir? Ma, I'm doing great. I hope I'm coming in loud and clear. Excited to be back in the casting seat, if you will. It's been a little bit of time. I'm going to go ahead and Warm up the pipes and be ready to go. Thanks once again. Real excited. American Dota League Season 2. Let's do it. Yeah, man. Let's do it indeed. We are here. We have 10 k in prize money on the line, of course, going all the way to the, of course, playoffs and finals. This is going to be some Group B action right now. Two-game series. As you guys know, Group A, top four teams, they'll be facing off against each other on the weekends with best of three series. These are going to be two-game series tonight. We have this series as well as THD versus Union Gamers a bit later on in the evening. As of right now, though, two games to start things off here with no other spirit. They've got some pretty uh, recognizable names. You've got Relic there with Fan of Soyan, a.k.a. Goody, one of the best carries, slash, I guess, supports from Venezuela out there. Osiris Gaming, Sleazel, formerly of Team E-Hug, slash, I guess, Pretty Boy Swag, and Guanzo, formerly of Aosin Plus Four. So some recognizable names, Kyle Guy, and this should be a decent matchup. And this is what I like about the American Dota League. It provides you that insight into the competitive North, North American scene that's not seen a whole lot, you know, and it's actually nice to see these two teams face off against each other. Yeah, and the whole thing, it's not always just about the North American scene. We got a lot of really good South American scene player. We'll get to see. This matchup in particular is going to be two North American teams trying to make a break, trying to take it to the next step up, to be next to the Liquids, to be next to the EGs, the Cloud9s, what have you. And then we also got a lot of really good Brazilian, Peruvians, a lot of good South American talent. So I'm real excited. Just want to give a quick Five, plug. I want to make sure everyone, if you haven't already, you can get the ticket. It's only $3.99, and it does include a brilliantly minimal black HUD. I don't know if you've seen it, Mod. It's pretty sexy. Yeah, it looks real good. Obviously, this is presented by none other than High Ground TV, of course. Myself, Kyle Guy, and What Is Hip combining forces to bring you the best in American Dota content as well as all around the world. So, already jump into the draft and Kyle Guy, I'm excited. We've got the Nix Assassin, Marana, and the Invoker coming out from Northern Spirit. Good stuff to start things off here. Oh, yeah. A lot of Sweet pickups. Invoker is someone that typically gets the ban outright, but uh, you know things do change. Ember Spirit's a high priority now. A lot of the ancient apparition, the lycanthrope. These are things you can't just easily let slide by and give away to these teams. They could crush games very easily. So by getting rid of them, you're allowing Noah Spirit now to pick up the very powerful Invoker in that mid lane. So as long as they have a prominent Invoker player, which I would have to say, Relic is got to be one of the guys who can do it. <laughs> Known as the RTZ Slayer himself this guy can play a serious mid game yeah he's known for his relic buying or his excuse me his null talisman buying abilities but we'll see if that comes into play they have a chance here to pick up a dazzle which is a very strong support early on they go for the shadow shaman instead another high value target somebody that that is really good at pushing down towers with the ether shock he can of course force some fights he's got the hex he's got the shackles for lockdown he is just a strong all-around support interesting to see that he's picked up here but more and more often we're seeing that pick come through which i love to see everyone loves Loves a Rasta, right? Of course everyone loves a Rasta Pasta. And this is a hero who has a lot of flexibility, can work around, but with the Invoker already grabbed, safe to assume this will be just kind of one of those side lane Shadow Shamans. Now, this already can lead towards a heavy push initiative. So we'll see if it's something that No Earth Spirit want to build into, if they want to grab some extra pushing power to work with and try to end this game sooner than later. And Osiris Gaming already picking up the next Assassin, one of the best offlaners in the game, heavy defensive, and can really make or break a lot of fights and make great Great initiate plays in Marana. Well, so beautiful, so sexy, great smile. Enough about myself, Mott. Marana's great, though. <laughs> she is. She's a lot of fun to watch. It's all. It really comes down to those arrows. Are you going to hit them? Are you going to kind of whiff them? Are you going to be known as the sing sing shoot arrow hit arrow? Or are you going to be that guy that gets flamed in all chat in the middle of a pub game like this Marana, man? This Marana. So it's we'll not see. even just Marana. Even Nyx Assassin, someone who can yes. get ridiculed unmercifully with yes. that Impale. And Impale is not easy to land. Even the pros, even Funic, everyone, they admit that Impale, it's no easy task, Mott. And when you miss it, you will still look like a pathetic noob. Yeah, skill shot Dota right now for Osiris Game. And they're, they're, playing, they're playing with fire here, man, with these picks. You got to be like, well, they're, they're going to know if they miss something. We're going to be like, how oh, that... That impale, man, that arrow off the mark again, man. They're just not hitting those skill <laughs> shots, so 
Uh, hopefully it goes well for them right now. One minute and 15 seconds left here on reserve time. A couple more bands coming through. The last band of the second band phase coming out. We already have the Visage. Then now there's the Nature Prophet, the Templar Diamond Assassin, Diamond. and the Shadow Demon to round things out on no Earth Spirit side. So 32 seconds left in regular time plus 110 in reserve time for Osiris Gaming. They've got that Nick Assassin all thing like you talked about. They have that Marana more likely than not going to be that safely in Farmer. Now they need to go for some supports and perhaps some meta later on down the draft. Yep, and I do also believe Osiris are kind of getting the hunch that maybe no Earth Spirit want to go with some sort of pushing tactic. So they get rid of one of the best support pushers that are available, Visage. They also get rid of Datra's Prophet because who knows other than the greedy man himself, the heavy ratter. Now look at this, typical peanut butter and jelly style. I like this mop. Bane and Marana go hand in hand like a match made in heaven. They can just set up easy arrow guidelines with the help of the sleep we'll see if it's something they want to put together in a lane and just try to dominate and now pressure will be on no earth spirit on when they lane it how are they going to do with the defenses now typically this is going to add a little more pressure on shashram to make sure you can help out an ally in need if they are slept and caught up but they're going to need a little more than that yeah and honestly you, you talked about the bait you talked about the mana they are like peanut butter and jelly I, I like to think of them as oreos and milk and honestly it's just so nice to watch the nightmare into the air like you talked about feeds group is excellent as well they have a lot of potential pickoff uh utility whether it's you know single target they have the impale to get you know maybe two heroes locked down it's it is going to be that kind of ganking lineup for osiris gaming whereas no earth spirit they have potential to lock down fights or they can go for that heavy push with the Invoker Quas Exhort with the Rasta and his Shadow Shaman Serpent Wards. We'll see. One minute and ten seconds left in reserve time. The first game of the evening, the first game of the season. A lot here mm -hmm. at stake. Who's going to come out on top is the question. And the answer, we'll find out shortly, my friend. Yeah, the game does mean a lot, too. You want to come into these big tournaments day one. You want to have a strong first impression and first performance. It can be pretty morally devastating if you go into this one and you just already get a loss right away on your record. So they definitely want to come in hard and strong. No Earth Spirit, their third grab, and with the secondary support, it looks like, will potentially be the Rubik, which is great. I mean, he it's very easy to get that sweet, sensual ultimate that Bane has the offer. The feed script is just an easy snag by Rubik's standards, and even if you're able to grab the arrow, that's just a little bit of extra frosting on that cake. So I do agree with this. Rubik's also someone who can make shit happen early. Throw smoke in his pocket. He can make the you know adventure to the mid lane, set up something with that telekinesis, the fade bolt heavy nuke damage. So look for a little bit of early aggression as well from No Earth Spirit. Yeah, they have that Rubik now. I do love that pick, guys. And of course, remember, go ahead and check out Steel Series. They are sponsoring the American Dota League Season 2. Shout outs to them, obviously. But mm -hmm. while that's all going on, we still have one minute left in reserve time for Osiris Gaming right now, as you can clearly see. And, well, as it's interesting because they have the Spain, they have the Nexus Assassin, they have the Marana. They're probably going to go for the next support here. Maybe have something else that's good at shutting heroes down or at least having some sort of lockdown so they can roam on mid. They can try to take the Invoker down and deal with him early on, whether it's like a Vengeful Spirit or Crystal Maiden. There are a couple of options there. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody that has some decent counter push as well. We'll see what they want to go for for Osiris Gaming. Of course, of course. And before we move on to the final roundup of the draft and we get to see what the teams are going to be bringing forward, I just want to do a brief background check behind each of them. No Earth Spirit, if most people didn't know, was formerly known as PSST or Pool Sorcery Some Tangos, and they, we've already talked about how solid talent they have. Uh, they're currently 10-1 and one in SIVO, so they have a strong performance over there. It's not a statistic you'll typically find on Dat Dota if you're trying to research these teams a bit, but they have been performing very well as recently. They're only second to E-Hug in that league. And Osiris Game Gaming are currently coming off a loss to E-Hug themselves and their Star Ladder performance, but we already can tell they have a lot of roster changes, Ma, and we didn't get to talk about it too much. Sleasel has been making an appearance, and I think Seven is snaking. Am I right? No, they actually changed him out. There, there was an issue okay. there. Snaking was in the lobby a bit beforehand, but he had to, you know, withdraw for reasons that I don't know if we necessarily can talk about. Uh, okay, fantastic. One. I, I think it's 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 exciting to talk about as we have maybe a, another team coming through Five here not too long a time, but that's all the information I can give you guys mm -hmm. right now. Okay. But, you know, Death Prophet picked up, man. That's a hero we don't see too often. And that's a push right there, and that is a potential team fight that you don't want to fight into. No Earth Spirit. They pick up the clockwork as well. Might try to lock down that DP and see what they can do against it. But, ooh, Death Prophet, that's a scary hero to deal with. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of a spice on this team that we haven't seen in quite some time. So, I mean, if I'm pretty confident, I would suppose maybe potentially putting this Death Prophet in the mid to contest the Invoker, which on paper I would still kind of give the nod to Invoker personally, given in the right hands, and especially I am a little biased towards Relic. I think he's a very talented individual, but given 
they want, it looks like to have a bit of a clash of the titans as far as pushing power here if you're going to match up against a shadow shaman but we'll see where it leads them and uh, no earth spirit they grab up clockwork who's notoriously one of the best initiators it was something they were lacking up until this point so it's a nice solid pickup to grab as their off laner so We'll see now. Cyrus Gaming, if they run that Marana Bane against the Clockwork, they're going to look to play very aggressive and, aggressive rather, and see if they can catch him out and not allow him to get little to any CS or XP in the lane. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right there. Let's see if they can shut him down. Make sure he's a non-factor. It's all about him getting level 6, much like it is for Nyx Assassin on the other side of things. Talking about the pushes and who's going to be able to push who, you have no Earth Spirit. They have the Shadow Shaman. He has Serpent Wars. Whereas Not on the other side, team. Death Prophet and Exorcism, it comes down to who has the ultimates and when our team's ready to fight. The kind of the X Factor is Invoker because if he does go for Quas Exhort, you do have the Forge Spirits and those hurt like hell even if you are a Death Prophet. So it comes down to ultimate usage right now. I think for both sides and also it comes down to initiation like we talked about for the clock for what have you but as it stands now osiris they need to grab potentially another support if unless they want to use that nix assassin Ten as a supporting really? role and no earth spirit they have to grab their safe lane farmer here we'll see if they go for something Five a bit more aggressive or if they go for that hard carry maybe something like luna or faces void or what have you and Luna was actually just banned out, so unfortunately that will not be an option, though I do agree, Mont, that would have been a nice, prominent pickup, but they're not even going to get there. They're going to grab instead the Lifestealer up for themselves, and, well, I'm already looking. They do have the potential to work some sort of Nyx Assassin Lifestealer bomb for a good initiation tactic, but I would have to say that even just the Clockwork grab is more than enough initiate in this whole game. So, and uh, you did touch base a little bit on it, Invoker, I would have to believe, is it's looking like a quest. Quasex or kind of invoker here. I mean, you have the lockdown with the walls to get an easy sun strike, and of course the spirits add a little bit of extra, you know, pushing flavor. Though everyone as of late are do love the Quas Wex or they love the crowd control, the EMP, and the good isolation plays he can bring out. So regardless of all that, they need a hardcore. They grab up the Slark. This is someone they might look to get aggressive early and snowball out of control. I like the man fight now between the Slark and Lifestealer. This is going to make things pretty interesting. Yeah, I absolutely love this pickup coming out from No Earth Spit. For Osiris Gaming, it was interesting. I thought they were going to go for that Nyx Assassin offlane, but it said it's looking more and more like either a Marana solo safe lane or a Marana offlane. Lifestealer is going to be as that core farming like you talked about going to be a huge pickup and it's so good to fight early on against an invoker against a rasta so they have that potential have sunstrike's not going to matter if you're raised up ready to go so we'll see how it goes this is going to be the first game of the adl season two ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for joining us it's high ground tv providing you the best in adl action my name is Mott. with me is coddle guy we'll get into some introductions real quick on ban earth spirit we've got bricks he'll be on the slark fan of soyan aka goody from venezuela is going to be on that rubik Half fried egg roll might be on the clockwork here. Knave is going to be on the Shadow Shaman and Relic, the Invoker player. And on your Osiris side, leading up at the top of the lane, we got Sleasel leading the front of former NEL player that I'm very familiar with. He's got a strong talent, great carrying ability. Willies is going to be on the Bane, accompanying a little bit of babysit right beside him. Also, a bit of a aggressive support ish Marana here by Oss. Mid lane is going to be Seven playing the Death Prophet. And finally, in your bottom seven. off lane, we got Guanzo on the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and Guanzo, just one of the best players in North America altogether. Just in America, because of course, he's got that high MMA. He's on the leaderboards. He's right up there with the rest of them. Formerly of Aosin Plus 4. Strong, strong player. He's made some great plays in his time. And he is going to be this offlane Nyx Assassin. So it's a support Marana, like you mentioned here, with the Sentry Wars, with the Smoke of Deceit coming out. They want the Nightmare. They want the Arrow. Marana, usually a bit better in that kind of core role where you can get her some CS. You can get her some right click with phase boots, what have you. I'm not sure how I feel about this right now, but they should be able to deal with this clockwork no problem in the top lane. Yeah, it's a bit of pressure on them. If they don't have the opportunity to capitalize with this sweet, sweet combo they got going, it could end up, you know, blowing up right back in their face. So they're going to look to try to get something going early. Otherwise, they might try to just instead maneuver to other lanes, just try to get the action going. I'm never particularly a fan of Marana playing support, not getting a lot of farm for herself. So we'll see what happens. Awesome sure is a very talented player. We'll see if she can pull it out in the end. Clockwork very hanging back here already. Well in the side jungle there, pulling them all the way back to the tower. So this will be very helpful. And just one of those little niches that Clockwork has that makes him such a great offlaner. Yeah, already you can see it's right under the tower here. You'll be able to see us safely here. The problem right now for the other team of Cyrus is they have Guanzo. This is a very precarious lane. If he gets pounced, if he gets telekinesis like he is right now, Let's there should on. be a Sunstrike coming through potentially if he has invoked. Nice and pale onto two. Guanzo getting locked down. Bricks doing what right click he can. There's no spike carapace. He is going to go down south. Not going to save his life. 
Nave getting the kill. Was close there for a second, but man, did they ever get that first blood coming through. Now he knows he has to just play a little more cautious, a little bit of a redemption spike as he suddenly returns from the TP back to the bottom lane here, but now he has to learn to step back a bit. Can't get overzealous by trying to get greedy with picking up some CS. This uh, banner spirit team, they're ready to make a jump with the opportunities there. And we saw, just like explaining the draft, that Rubik, man, he can get the plays going early. That telekinesis can isolate so well. Yeah, fan of Soyan, I mean... When he first made his transition into the support role, I was kind of questioning it. I said, listen, Goody, he's a great farmer. He can hit creeps like nobody's business. But his support role was kind of iffy to me. He made a couple of misplays in the NEL here and there. But coming through right now, he, like you said, made that play with the telekinesis. We'll see if he continue it further here as we jump further and further into the game. Two minutes in already, one kill on the board. Guanzo looking for that two-minute rune, just trying to get rune control for the Death Prophet player who has no uh, bottle just yet coming out maybe pretty soon. It's going to be a haste room top, so it looks like it will be the Dyers to pick up here. And in fact, Os might grab it or just keep it for seven. Who has this bottle coming out right now? Yep, and on your mid lane, it looks like Relic has picked up his second Blades of Attack. No surprises there. Going straight for the face boots. He wants to put out the heavy hitting damage right now. Two levels into Quas, so, you know, still has the opportunity to kind of change things up, but already has the Cold Snap to work with, but more or less just some respectable farm, and they're both trading rather evenly, nine to eight, but we have also lines. He is waiting for the right opportunity to lay out an arrow, and if he can land this one, this would be very devastating for Banner Spirit. There it goes. Going. Ooh. I right think behind. he saw it. It's, he just saw it, I think. He just kind of yeah. noticed it. He's like, all right, just walk forward a bit here, and I'll be fine. That's a bold play coming out from Oz there, almost hitting that arrow. Talking about Relic's build, he is going to go for the Quas Wex. He's going to go for the Cold Snap EMP as well. Try to do what damage he can. Burning a lot of the mana of seven, but not enough. He'll back away, not doing enough damage there. Relic, he, like we said, going to go for that Quas Wex. Means he's going to have control over these team fights early on, which is surprising, again, especially against a Lifestealer in this game. Yep, and we'll see how it ends up paying off for him. I do like in this top lane how we're off, so he didn't land the air on the bottom lane. They have been making themselves very useful, have a lot of stacks already building up right here, and this might be a bit of a community effort, I guess, in this top lane to try to take it all down, but regardless, they all get to pull it back, try to see if they can force Clockwork to be a part of the fight, or at least get a little closer, have something to give away. He has committed no CS in this game so far, but he's happy to just not die in this lane. Yeah, the problem is he's not getting any experience. I mean, he's like level two. I was like, come on, guys, please, can I get some experience anywhere, guys? And really, it's just not working out for him. He could go down here and leech experience from the low ground and then cogs up if he's in any trouble. Um, he's not doing that right now. He doesn't know this pull is happening. I don't think they also have a lane ward here, so they'd know if he went down there. And it would just be kind of problematic, I think, for the the, the uh, excuse me the clockwork at this point. Whereas on the other side of things, at least the Nix Assassin, he's level three, so he has that going for him now. Oh, nice denying that war yeah. in room, man. That's, That's dirty. Yeah, Nave with the big plays there on that illusion room, just to make sure no illusion room for you, Mr. Guanzo. Both teams very adamant, making sure they want to try to get proper rune control, but obviously the advantage goes to Shao Shaman, and that bit being a little bit of, you know, range to work with, quickly denies it, takes it away, but each time so far, the two-minute and four-minute, they've been very adamant in trying to get it going, so other than that, though, a relatively slow, methodical pace game right now, Mott, only 1-0, and oh, and we're getting ready to four minutes and 30 seconds into this one, but I think they want to get another thing on Guanzo, they're making the initiative in, there's the lift, they're looking to pull him back, the knife shackle timing, pounce with five bricks, this should be an easy pick off with the help of the death pack desperation carapace will not matter ether shock to follow it up and nave will be the one to pick up the kill i think they heard you man when you said slow and methodical like that all right we got to pick up the yeah. pace now because on the other side of things osiris they're looking for a smoke of deceit gank here on relic will he get caught out relic running away with that rex move speed and phase he is fine avoiding that nightmare coming up from willies just not enough there to grab that kill os has to back off so does the bane player and already 2-0 going the way of banner spirit or no earth spirit here there's always a funny thing you have to consider when you're, a, you know, let's say a really strong mid lane player focusing really hard on CS. When you're focusing really hard on CS, sometimes you don't see the obvious arrow coming your way. So I do like that Oss, they're, they're thinking about that. They're seeing that if Relic, he might be straining right now in the CS battle going against seven, but he does not care. Throws out an early EMP for a bit of aggression and a cold snap. He's thinking about making a move on seven, instead just kind of asserting his dominance in the lane and he's doing some serious work right now. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely right. It's just asserting dominance making sure he has the lane control he's gonna get the last hits there is no mana for death prophet and she needs that mana to be able to get cs with crypt swarm that's not available right now so she has to back off she's down in cs by about you know six or so so she's still doing okay not too terribly up against relic who like we said is going for quas wex 
There's a couple of roams coming through. Guanza's looking for that six minute room, but now, finally, ban Earth Spirit. They pick Double up a room for damage. themselves. Nave has the DD. They spotted it out for the Dire team, so they know this is coming if they try to gank mid. And still, like you said, slow and methodical. That's the pace of this game, as you can see. And it might carry the way through until we start seeing some pushes from maybe this Rasta when he hits level six. Maybe the Invoker tries to be involved in a couple of fights, but as it stands now, nothing really happening across the map. Yeah, Mont, you can definitely read my mind. I was just going to go into, I feel like that a lot of them wanted to take it more slow because they know that a lot of their heroes, their potential doesn't really get online until they reach that level six. Then they can bring forward all that push dominance and maybe if they can get some sort of pickoff going, they can quickly nab or maybe even two towers in the best case scenario. So I think that's why we're seeing a little bit of a slow player happening right now. They want to wait, they want to get the XP, they want to get the levels and then go for it. Bottom lane, they're you know very aggressive right here, pushing very hard into the tower and Guanzo doesn't have much mana to work with. Yeah, and already you can see uh, Guanzo actually got harassed a bit before. He had to back off now. He threw up an impale, did some damage to Bricks, but guess what? Bricks is a Slark, so regen is not a problem with him and having his Shadow Dance already at 7 minutes in. So he's level 6, he's ready to go. This game is really, I think, more so about experience than anything else. You think about how much of this game requires experience in terms of throwing out Stroll Ultimates, throwing out a couple of levels of Crypt Swarm, throwing out, obviously, the Shadow Dance getting that level 2, the Invoker, his abilities. He's going to try to go in mid. There is going to be that Tornado EMP pushing him back, but again, a lot of the slow play comes from the lack of experience on both sides here, and we'll see if they pick it up. I wanted to talk about Sleazel right now, who's at 49 last hits. He's going to be going for a Midas potential. He's got 1,600 gold in the bank. He could buy the recipe outright right now. He's got the phase already done. If he wants to take this late, that Midas certainly could be an option, but wrapping around to the backside... Half right egg roll. He's getting nightmared up. There's the arrow Ooh, going through. Nice. Maybe it's some trouble. Open Wounds is going to fly next. Rage is going to head up as well. And he is going to fall. Nice pickoff coming for Sleazel. And that's even more gold going for the Lifestealer player. And he does pick up that Midas recipe. Yeah. Osiris finally managing to be able to get themselves on the board. And they finally nabbed that very defensive clockwork. So nice win for them. Sleazel, though, has had all the room to build in copious amounts of farm, like you talked about. Lin is going to be looking to go into the Midas. So it's nice to have that late game to fall back on. Slark is not going for a Midas for himself and I know initially the plan was they wanted to be very aggressive early with the Marana with the arrow and the sleep and they couldn't really get anything going and we're kind of seeing the you know the repercussions of that right now Marana doesn't really have much to work with she's only level three she's constantly moving around the lane now going to the bottom lane as they're looking to push forward and try to get the first tower going for themselves still no level six on Nave but oh. Nave he does eat an arrow yummy yummy in my tummy Brick's trying to make a run back but there's the follow up in pale one more brain snap and an auto attack and they take him down they're looking potentially for get a little bit more but just after I say the Marana's not able to quite get a lot of arrows going she gets one right there yeah, man, they can hear you. They, they know what they need to do right now, and they're trying to find kills. Relic TP's down at the bottom lane. Tornado EMP is going to hit up. It is on Bane, but that is it. He takes a lot of damage. Cold Snap coming through. Not enough. One more right click would have done the job, and Bricks, he wants to clean it up, but he cannot dive that tower. So big arrow coming through from the Rana, grabbing that kill with the help of his teammates, and now they'll take another kill. It's tied up. Two to two. Hey. But this is what Death Prophet does. If you want to leave this lane relic and go to the bottom, I'm going to pop my ultimate and I'm going to try to take this tower. Already, though, Shadow Shaman is on the scene, you know, looking to try to defend himself. He doesn't have the wards yet to work with here, but Death Prophet doesn't care. She's going to look to push hard, but Relic's already back. Not much mana to work with, but yeah, that tift on the bottom lane could have gone a little bit better if Bricks and Soyan were able to be a part of it and help Relic out, but they were kind of juggling a bit of a sleep right there, and they couldn't quite get there in time. So it was a bit unfortunate that they couldn't get a little more going for themselves, but now things are all even up, two to two. Yeah, and something we haven't seen a whole lot of this game is, is Sleazel being a part of kills. He wants to continue to farm with that Midas. He's doing a really great job of it. 67 CS, the highest CSer in the game right now. and. Okay, well, it'll continue that way, I think, for the next couple of minutes. He, he doesn't have that great of an ability to flash farm with, but with the Midas, it kind of helps him out in that, in that sense. So we will see Guanzo down here. Looks like they might try to initiate. Willie's is going to come through. Nightmare. Pounce is going to go through. Big Bricks is a bit further away. Arrow's going to fly. It is going to hit. Not going to be max duration, but still a lot of damage taken. He's going to Shadow Dance and back away just enough of time. So it'll be fine here. We'll see him back away. And as we see that Relic roaming through the river looking for Tornado EMP, they have no ward coverage here. All the while, Awesome Willie's backing around, going on the backside, maybe looking for Relic here. Oh boy. Man, that uh, Shadow Dance is just such a fantastic ability. I mean, some people would even cry OP about it. Just such a free eject button sometimes when you're getting into a lot of trouble. You just fucking pop that bad boy, make a run around the corner. Your next thing you know, you're regened up to full life and you're ready to fight again. So 
it's definitely a nice little tactic that Slark has to fall back on, but Osiris Gaming, with all their heavy lockdown, with the Bane, and a little bit extra disabled, they can prevent him from getting anything like that off. And mid lane rotation coming through, Phantom Soin, Telkinese, his Death Prophet maybe in some trouble, there's the Shackles, Cold Snap are gonna fly first as well, EMP, Hex is up, Arrow flies, it does hit on Goody, he will have to back away, Oss is gonna try to do what damage he can, Relic wants to continue to chase, nice Crypt Swarm Steel coming out from the Rubik player, they're looking for this Marana, but they can't quite get it, all in the meanwhile, down by Pounce just misses. Brooks looking for more. There's the flare. Shadow Dance. One more right click. Guanzo trying to juke with the tower. Doing an excellent job of it. Dark Pack and the right click will get the kill. Now backing away with, of course, the drum online. Now 4 to 2 the score. They and Earth Spirit, they seem to have a bit of a lead here. Yep, they do have a lead on paper, yes. 4-2 to two is the score. Um, oh, they want more here. Relic feeling the move on Marana, but unable to commit for one more auto attack to take it down to 7. Does make the rotation back to the lane, but they need to get these kills. Top lane, Sleasel, by the way, quick uh, TP out of there to get away from any danger, but does get the tower, and that's the thing, Mod. They may be getting the kills right now, but Sleasel has been doing serious work, going PvE in this top lane right now. 85 last hits, now a tower. He has that Midas. He's building up a lot of gold. Drums now already complete. Where do you think he's going to take it from here? I think, honestly, SMY could be a good choice for Sleeves if he wants to. Arm Armlet's obviously a good choice as well for life stealers in general. SMY, Armlet, Basher, if you're feeling lucky, and maybe into an Abyssal shortly thereafter, but I don't see really any other options than that. We do see sometimes life stealers go for Desolators, but this game might not warrant it. It, it really depends. I mean, they don't really have the armor reductions to begin with, so maybe they do go for that. Not that there's really any tanky, armory heroes on the side of Banner Earth Spirit. Still, there's a lot of options. I'll put my money, and I'm betting right now. Okay. You could, you could hold me to this. I'm putting my money on SNY right now. Putting on SNY for Lifestealer. All right, I can respect that. We'll see if he wants to dual wield the sexy swords, but... Regardless, mid lane, we're getting a bit of a stalemate coming out from Banner. If they feel like uh, Osiris, they're going to look to try to get a second tower going. They know that the Death Prophet is nearby and most likely has the Exorcism available to work with here, but they're not going to hand anything over easy. Bottom lane, Nave has been working to try to finally get level 6 online for himself. That is so crucial at this point that need, he needs a bit of a solo lane to get up to that XP. And we're seeing right now an infest bomb in the making as Guanzo's looking to make a move in, Mott. Yeah, Guanzo, you can, he's vendetted up, he's ready to go, they're gonna run right in front of the tower, jump out, there's the impale, oh! shot comes through immediately from the clockwork, nice nightmare, Van of Soin about to fall, and will, clockwork in trouble, he's stuck in there with that life stealer, you don't want that, hexed up now, now he's shackled, air flying through, just missing, Bricks backing off, nice impale, but he's shadow danced up, Relic with the tornado coming through, EMP on top of all that, Relic still alive, 7 getting low, so is us, he won't fall, back into the fray, the clockwork goes, I think it was a one-for-one one trade when it was all said and done, correct me if I'm wrong. A lot of fighting over only two kills. Yeah, that got, that got out of hand real quickly. They had the initiate plan in hand, but Clockwork was lingering right there in the woods and shut them down. But with the rest of Osiris Gaming making the shift in, the Bane was there to help out. It kind of didn't turn out as bad as they hoped, but though they did lose the Death Prophet in exchange for the one Rubik, so, you know, a slight nod in that sense over to Banner Spirit, but they did not get the Precious Liesel down. Oh, man, Relic wants to go on Nyx here. Guanzo in a bit of trouble. He eats the EMP, but he gets the stun out and will retreat back. That just There's not that much killing potential for this Invoker right now. He has a lot of control in teamfights, but he needs heroes to combine up with him. If he gets Sun Strikes, if he had Exhort, for example, maybe mm -hmm. he does a bit more damage and he wins the fights and, of course, gets a couple of kills, but here he's alone, and now, speaking of alone, there might have been an arrow coming through from Oss. All the while, up top, Hookshot going in, I believe from, of course, half fried Egg Roll. Willie's trying to do the turnaround here with the Brain Sap. Spell was stolen, I think that was Brain Sap picked up. Wanzo now, attack. there to help out as he TPs in. He has Vendetta ready to go, he has Impale up online, and he's going to use it just to farm a bit of creeps here. So as it stands, it's 5-3. to three. Life Stealer is farming up to that raid boss status, and now, well, I was wrong. He's, he picked up the Helm of the Iron Will, so there goes my, my bed. It's okay, Mod. We didn't shake on that. I won't hold you to it. You can just buy me a drink at TI4, hopefully. <laughs> okay, I owe you like four drinks at this point, then. <laughs> That's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If he went Quas Exort, would it be a big difference? I mean, once again, I love the fact that he dodged that arrow, but I also loved... <laughs> I, I mean, I, I love the crowd control ability that Invoker has with this Quas Wex, but the fact is that they don't have that damage output, and they do have a little bit of lockdown to work with so they can land the Sun Strikes and everything, but hold that thought. Top lane, I'm sensing a bit of a tift right here. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, he's looking forward. Oh, nice Vendetta from Guanzi. Mm -hmm. Do they have a sentry? Vendetta oh, he, hit, Impale, Crypto. Oh, boom. He's dead. Vendetta, what were you thinking? 
they need tries to, to peek in there and he gets you know he gets shut right in the face yeah honestly like i don't know why i didn't put a sentry down did he have one he didn't they need to carry some sentry words here they do have one of course on the shadow shaman but he's very aggressive right here so Dyer's that run right into him under attack yeah, that's a bit of a mistake. Dyer's that's all right. It happens from time to time. Five to four, the score. Sleazel now has his arm laid. This is what I was talking about. This guy, he knows I hate creeps. This guy is a player from, of course, the NEL, formerly of Pretty Boy Swag. Grats, though, a lot of major teams. I mean, this guy, he played with Arteezy on a couple of teams back in the day. I know. Showing my, showing my age here in terms of my Dota knowledge, I suppose. Got, you got to plug one in at least a game, I guess. Yeah, one Arteezy a day. That's what I say, so... Yeah, and I know this Osiris team has also been shifted around a lot. There's a lot of new names, and I know people have always said if you got to get in stand-ins for this team, it's you know it's great to have the stand-in be one of the, the carries because they typically have an easy job working from team to team. Pretty much, you got the same roles you always do: hit those creeps, get that farm, and take us into the promised land. Seriously, I mean that's that's what it's got to be in this game. And Life Stealer, he knows his team is maybe a bit behind here. Actually, they're farming very well. 4,000 gold lead. I don't know where that came from. I suppose it came from some of the fights. They did take that a couple tier 1 towers, in fact. And the experience lead as well as 500. And Fess is up. Serpent Wards are going to go. Arrow does miss. Wanzo jumping out. And Fess, Relic, going to get caught in a position. Will he fall? He might have Ghost Walk. Doesn't matter. Two down immediately as they also pick up Phantom Soyon. They're going to take these wards real quick and push into another tower with the help of this exorcism coming up from 7. So big fight for Osiris. And they're getting bigger and bigger as the game goes on. I feel like that fight already is a foreshadow of how this game is going to be going right here. They just blew him up right in the face. They had that sweet initiation going out with the bomb, and then it just falls it up so easy from there. Now they have the exorcism out. This should be an easy tier one for themselves. All Banner Spirit wanted was a tower. They just want to finally get a tower. They finally got the wards. They want to put them down. They want some gold, goddammit, but they can't get it. Osiris Gaming just kept shoving it right back in their face, and they're like, no, no, we're going to take a tower. And they take it right back. They wanted to control the pace of the game, and oh boy, did they. I mean, they had that life to with a bunch of items up online already. The Nate's Bomb came out, and just too much damage to deal with. And that was still, I believe, only level 1 Exorcism. Might be level 2 right now. Yeah, it did just get leveled up. So now the Exorcism is even more difficult to deal with. You have all of those spirits running through, all of that damage to deal with. And now they're going to take a Roshan on top of all of it. They, of course, counter warded real quick, and Nave's going to throw up another ward, but it's a bit too Dyer's late. They cannot contest this Roshan. They, they can't even trade for a tier 1 tower top like many teams do. So they're going to get nothing out of this and lose the Roshan on top of it all. Yep. Yep, and this is going to make things all the more powerful. Those are the pings, the rocket, but it's just a little too late as they grab the token for themselves. and. Sleasel will head out back to the base as he's, you know, taking a bit of damage there from the Roche. But will Banner Spear finally get this tower? EMP to go out for a little bit of harassment. Now Willies has not much mana nor life to work with right now. But the initiation coming out of Guanzo lands the strike. There goes the stun. He's committed. He wants to finish off with the wand. Is there to get him turned back with the hex shackle. But it is canceled, unfortunately. Now they're looking to go for more. Oh, they're trying to get redemption. But no. Under the moonlight shadow, will he get away? Cog bounce, but it will not be enough. He earns himself, makes a retreat out towards the south and man, Banner Spirit just cannot get it going for themselves. Yeah, and they're just, they didn't have the coverage there with the Sentry Wards, and Moonlight Shadow is going to cause an issue for them until they can Dyer's get a Gem of True Sight or have more people to carry detection. I mean, you only have one guy really carrying detection for you, that's your five player, and that's Nave. and honestly, Rubik needs to be a better, bigger, bigger part of, of course, the supports, just trying to get some sort of detection going, get a couple of more support items, instead of just having that staff of Wizardry trying to build into that four staff. The items are coming out for Osiris right now. They have the Yule's Scepter of Divinity up for Death Prophet. That's a huge item for her. Maybe build a bit tankier a bit later. But now if she gets caught out, she can always just throw herself up in the air. While the Exorcism is going, keep herself alive and try to do as much damage as possible. There is luckily a Blade Mail coming out for Clockwork now. But still, if that's the only item you're really counting on, that's a mm -hmm. bit troublesome here. Yeah, they are they have a lot of defensive tactics coming up, but not anything as far as offensive work. Even Bricks, you know, has his Ogre Club, but this is looking to go into a BKB, and that's no damage itself. He's just looking to try to survive and maybe steal some of that agility, make something happen. But he is going to be in a world of hurt right now. Guanzo, an assassin on the hunt. Nice ping out, easy scout report to come in. Can he get the last hit? No, just let's Vendetta instead expire. Immediately pinged, and now they're on their own back. He sees this. He needs to make a run. Desperate Arrow will not land. Bricks can't find the right spot to beans, team me out of there. Beans, beans. Yep, yep, they got him. No problem. They should be able to shut him down. Heavy nuke of the Star Storm. One more auto attack and they do it. I guess he just couldn't find the right spot to hide and get a TP out without getting hit by a potential arrow. And unfortunately, man, I mean, that's it. That's your core carry getting caught out. 
Yeah, and he was building towards that BKB, like you mentioned. It's going to take him a bit more time to get there. That 1,300 gold needs to be saved up for the recipe. All the meanwhile, they're looking for this Death Prophet top lane. They might get her. There's the Tanner going through the Cold Snap as well. The Cogs, nice. Yule Scepter. Going to avoid the AP. No, I think she took a bit of hit of it there. But now Hookshot missing through. Arrow's going to fly. Missing on both heroes. Still trying to chase. Crypt Swarm going to back them off. They can't get a kill. Down bottom, getting dove. Oh, Nade is going to fall very quickly. Relic maybe just TP'd into his doom. He is going to use that drum charge and try to speed away. Sizzle using one of his own as well. Trying to chase after Relic. There's the Ghost Walk. He is very speedy with that ability. He will not get caught out of position there. He'll be just fine, I think. And they just cannot seem to get the momentum going in their favor. They're working. They're sweating so hard to try to get a couple of these kills, a couple of these towers, but they are paying for it in the end. And with all map control right now, Osiris scouting things out, taking control of the enemy jungle. Willies was leading the front there momentarily. And as of now, it looks like he might be building either into a Force Staff or Necronomicon, but regardless, they're going to go with an offensive Moonlight Shadow here. They have the Infest online, ready to go, all put there in the Nyx Assassin. But for now, Banner Spirit all choked up, suffocated inside their base desperately trying to scout out the enemy team with the help of a rockets but man all control right now going towards the cyrus gaming yeah absolutely i mean I, they have this game in hand with the agents they take a couple of tier one tower or tier two towers excuse me they can of course increase their lead get a couple more items and take the game even if it goes late i have to give it to Osiris here just because of death profit ult and that physical damage Marana is going to build towards carry eventually. The Life Stealer is going to get probably bigger. Now, Infest out coming through. Guanzo doing work with the Impale. Relic caught out of position. Gets blown up. Two hit by Sleasel after the Impale damage coming through with that Basher up online. Sleasel is dominating. He's got the drum charges at three. They're going to look to push high ground here. Seven still has that extra system going at least for a couple of seconds. Get some damage up at the tower. Super Wars might come through to try to defend this. They might have to. We'll see what happens. Sleasel going in deep. Now decided to back off. There is going to be the four Notification. We gotta watch out though, Osiris. If they take a bad fight here, this could become very problematic very quickly for them. Yeah, it would be problematic, but they still have the Aegis to work with, so Sleasel's ready to be aggressive here. He might be caught out. They're happy to blow the Aegis if that's what it takes. He gets hit with a couple of attacks, but man, the damage on Nate! Rids him right apart. They want to go for Fantasoya. Desperate force to have to get away, but nope, Sleasel cleans him up as well. Moves on to a double. He's hungry for bricks. There we go. The second life. The second coming of the of the Nate's Christ, if you will. Gonna pop right back up from the dead. They take down the tower in the end. Ooh, nice little tornado. EMP to follow. Sleasel, though, he's having a man fight right now on bricks. Bricks, leap away in desperation but you know regardless they can't stop this man i love pat soul and osiris gaming but man sleasel is doing great work as they're carrying yeah absolutely will is getting orchided up right now taking a lot of damage is gonna fall to the orchid silver no he's at 23 hp they do hex up the death prophet sleasel wants to continue to fight nay three four hits and he's gone half right egg roll no they're gonna go for bricks instead big and pale no the vendetta first double kill for the life stealer going to town they have lost their life stealer right now Oz getting caught in a position double kill for the clockwork they do turn it around they defend at least one building down in that bottom lane seven just avoiding that tornado with that yule scepter look how speedy he is he's a freaking she has race never car. ran so fast in her life look at her go <laughs> <laughs> she is out of there so quick man the yules is so nice to have on death profit man it's just doing some serious work but yeah mission accomplished they not only acquired the tier three but also a set of racks for themselves in the sweet sweet range rack so nice job there for osiris gaming i mean what's it gonna take now ban her spirit don't ban Earth Spirit, ban Death Prophet. Like, what are they going to do to get back in this one? Yeah, honestly, the Death Prophet's done work. The life stealer from Sleasel's the true machine here. Just going in, just going hard, like you mentioned. Just getting that second life coming up and being a huge factor in that engagement. They dove a little too far. They couldn't focus the racks as much as they would have wallet would like to, I'd imagine, but still. Relic, he does have the Orchid up now, and that's something, but Quaswex is doing nothing up against this uh, life stealer right now, and they have to know it. Every time they throw up an ability, he'll just rage away. They have no real lockdown. They have nothing to deal with the fact that he is a life stealer and he's got rage. They don't have anything like a fiend's grip. They don't have anything like a primal roar. They just don't have anything to go through that BKB yet, and that's something they desperately need. You can count, mm -hmm. I guess, hookshot, but if you get if you get stuck in there, and he, he does have a force yeah. death, luckily, so he can force himself out. But still, that's that's all they got. That is all yeah. they got. No, I agree. I was gonna go into that mountain. You're just you're with me. We are like this right here because I'm thinking the same thing, man. Clock, that's the best thing they got to try to shut down this life stealer. He jumps in there and that's it. Four staff away and hope he doesn't come out of that cage. But now they're making a move. Speaking of cages, they cage up Willies, but Moonlight Shadow will not help him. EMP coming out from Relic will clean up the easy pickoff on the support. And the rest of Cyrus gang, they're smelling blood. They want redemption here, but for now they're just gonna pick up a little bit of extra gold in the pocket by picking up that ward. 
And honestly, at this point in time, that's a good pickup for Banner of Spirit, but they need about 20 more of those or two or three good fights, really, is, is what it's going to take, I think. If you look at the gold graph, there's a 10,000 gold lead for Osiris. It's not insurmountable, but, you know, it's one of those gold leads that just it doesn't seem to be, you know, just swinging anytime soon. On top of that, the, the 8,000 experience lead, and now there's an Abyssal Blade coming out for Sleazel, an item that is going to have such lockdown potential against the team. And honestly, Banner of Spirit, they need that on their Slark player, but they're not going to get there anytime soon. Like you talked about, he's only got his BKB now and 500 gold in the bank. It is a long, long game for Banner of Spirit to try to get back into this one. I mean, uh, to be blunt, I don't even know why they're still in this one. I mean, it could be thrown away. Let's not forget, Mott, this is North American Dota. And we've seen time and time again in the NEL and any other kind of, you know, lower-ish tier kind of tournament. Or not tournament, rather, but league and style play. A lot of these players, they can get a little overzealous. They can get a little selfish, a little greedy. And they can throw away some kills. And that's probably something that uh, Band Spirit is hoping will happen. But for now, this also congested hanging around this mid lane throwing any sort of defense they can. It's going to take a serious team fight, a serious throwaway for them to get back in this one. Yeah, absolutely. It really is going to take a big throw, I think. And Well, we just don't see that too often. I mean, Osiris Gaming, they're no EG, so I don't see any throws coming anytime soon. They don't have a throw courier, and uh, Sleazel's not known for his throwing potential, but still, we'll see what happens. 15,000 net worth in the bank. The Death Prophet going for that Heart of Trask, like I predicted. Just going to brush my shoulders off real quick. And there we go. Nice. Got it. Excellent. <laughs> I love Mott. So great. <laughs> I'm looking at the net worth as well, and I've been pretty I'm pretty appalled by what I see here. I'm seeing a, uh, a Slardar that's nearly, at, what, half of what this Sleasel's got going for him right now. It's extremely impressive. For now, though, we're going to farm up some sweet, sweet uh, Ancients, and they're going to wait out probably for this, you know, Roshan to pop back up. And, but in the meantime, actually, they want to get a little aggressive here. They pull out the smoke. They pull out the infest on the Vendetta. They're going to throw them out, scout things up. I'm trying to see if Banner Spirit have any sort of sentries placed out. They do have one on the infamous High Hill right here, so hopefully Osiris won't get a little too overzealous and get themselves spotted. Willie's on top of the hill. They will see him right here, so we'll see what Banner Spirit want to do from here. They're going to go oh. in with the initiation. Hookshot's going to go. Willie's getting caught out. Nice four step. Not going to save his life, though. The token is to the low ground, and... That was a Poor mistake. Man. Oh no, Sleazel's on the high ground. They took the warps up as well. Nave's trying to work on the low ground. Guanzo's four staffing away. He's got no appeal for three seconds. He's getting shackled up. Oz getting, of course, orchided. Nassans is gonna go. Mech's gonna fly as well. There's the exorcism relic getting chased down, still getting silenced. Arrows flying through. Is that gonna hit? No, that poor rain creep goes down instead. Relic still. <laughs> He's trying to juke around the trees, ring around the rosy. Nice ghost walk, but they have oh. the dust. Oh, he will fall down. All the while, somehow that Susan got out of there, but still Waskily good Wabbit. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, like, just running around the tree trying to get away, but it will not matter. And that's their best case scenario. They got Lifestealer out of the fight, but they still couldn't make anything happen. Death Prophet now pushing up the hill, doing what she does best, taking that to this uh, final melee racks. But, no, oh, ooh, missed that impale. Let's go ahead and shun him, everyone. Oh, nope, jumping coming out from Egg Roll. Can't capitalize as he eats an arrow to the face. Desperate Blade Mill four step away, but... Here comes Sleasel, back to the party, ready to man up, right click the town, can't quite decide if he wants to focus on anything, but nope, will eject, leave Death Prophet out to die, and the rest of them will swoop out of there. Nice defense coming up from Banner Earth Spirit, but what I liked better was that Osiris didn't want to commit too much to that. They knew that their Death Prophet was going to die, they said, listen, we still have the lead, let's not do anything crazy, let's back off arm. Roshi is in fact up, that's not going to be an issue. It'll be good stuff, all right? So we'll see what happens here in the next couple of min minutes. Excuse me, honest with that mech already online. And, uh, of course, Death Prophet, level 3 ultimate's going to be up in just a couple of seconds. She actually bought a full heart of Taras, so that, that problem with her getting locked down might not be an issue so much anymore. Yep, this is probably the quietest it's been. But just as I say that relic, eats a sweet, sweet arrow to the face. Man, pop that collar, but he does ghost walk and get out of there. Very nice quick pick off there, you know. OS is seriously doing work now with the arrows, making something happen. It was a little finicky there at the start of the game, but Marana's doing serious work right now with the help of the Moonlight Shadow as a defense mechanism and offensive mechanism. They're making things happen. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. They're using it to get into fights. They're using it to get out of fights whenever they need to. Moonlight Shadow is certainly one of the best abilities to do that. I don't think we have a Gem of True Sight yet for the rating team. They just don't have the money to kind of afford it. Maybe soon they'll go for it if they can get a bit more luxury in this game. But as it stands, they're getting choked out. And another Roshan and another Aegis will, of course, finish that off. But 
As they know. I say this, yes, exactly. They do know. They're ghost walking their way over there. Hookshot is going to be the way to initiate right now. How far is Roche down? Not quite low enough just yet. Are they going to fight on this? Here we go. Relic Mike jumps in. It's do or die. It absolutely is. Arrow's going to fly through. Just missing. Blink and Pale. They both know this is going to happen. Exorcist is flying. Guanzo's getting low. Serpent Wards are up. Shackle on us. Falling low, but Bricks gets a blade. And Sleazel going to town, taking down that Slark. That one big player on the side of Banner. Sleazel's getting low as well. Double kill for Phantom Soy on doing work. Exorcism going still. Now half right egg roll going down as well. They cannot take down Selic. Seven. Relic is the last person alive. He's on the run. And yes, they do lose Sleazel. But that exorcism, that level three exorcism, is absolutely doing work. I know you want to focus on that sweet treat Sleasel and try to take down the Bid Bad Nakes, but if you ignore for a moment the Death Prophet, she will rip you apart with that exorcism. You just cannot allow that to happen. And man, that looked like a great and promising and you know, start of the fight for Banner Spirit. They got the quick pick off. They took down the the Nyx assassin. They took down the Lifesteal and Marana quickly. Man, Fantasy was doing great work with the Fade Bolts, but it just did not matter, man. Those ghosts. They'll beat the shit out of you. Yeah, they really will. Those are some vengeful ghosts, honestly. The extras and they're mad. They're they're annoyed that they have to come out for this death profit right now. However, she's still not won the game four teams just yet. They're getting very close. Thirty one fifty six in, and and this game's going a bit longer than anticipated. I think at this point, mm -hmm. you think maybe Ban Earth Spirit. They're just hanging out for dear life. They continue to lose fights. It seems every which way. They are down twelve thousand gold now. Only a couple minutes ago, they were down ten thousand. So. Even more so now than before. 10,000 experience also going the way of Osiris here. They still have this chance to go for Roshan. Relic, he's sitting right next to his own sentry ward just to make sure everything's safe. He's ghost walked up. He's ready to go for his team. They smoke up again. They want to try to fight on Roche, but this time they're going to run maybe right into Willies here. Or on the other side of things, Guanzo, who's sitting into the trees. Osiris as well. Hookshot's going to fly through. They found Sleazel. they got to catch him out. They silence him up. And as I said, this is the only way they're going to lock him down. And in fact, they do lock him down. He's down for 71 seconds. They're turning it around here right now. Guanzo getting chased down. Moonlight Shadow is up. Do they have dust? Do they have detection? DP disconnected. She's oh, done the game. No. I was looking over. I'm like, why is she sitting there not doing anything? And that probably uh, is that would be a why. big reason why. Yeah, yeah that, that would disconnected. be it. Oh man, nice little cock block in the fight action right now, but good initiate. I, I, I know that Banispert knew. They're like, this is it, all right? There was a small glimmer of hope in that last fight. You know, we had a good you know start with the smoke. We got to do it again quickly. Now that that exorcism is down, this is our chance. Let's try to move forward and see if we can catch anyone out. They did see Sleasel. They got him and they got him down. And now a quick buyback coming out from him, but they had no death profit in this one. Now the exorcism is up, but she's far away. She's been running away in DC mode, so we'll see. I'm assuming Banner Spirit, they got what they wanted. They're going to pull back and just kind of take that mini victory for now. Yeah, and now Osiris, they have to play carefully. If they had Roche, I'd be very surprised. That'd be an aggressive play, especially considering they just used that buyback from Sleazel. We have to wait and see if the disconnect comes back through, and of course the TP gets back in the game. That's, that's really problematic. You hate to see it, but it does happen from time to time. Uh, still has a lot of net worth, and honestly, as it stands here, uh, they could still take this fight, but like you said, DP's nowhere near it here. 32 minutes in, that fight at least provides them a kill and a buyback immediately out of the life stealer, but what else can you do? Uh, they have to back off now, and Reconnect does come through, and we're going to get ready to go in just a second, it looks like. Yep, they're going to need about 10 more of those mini victories to really be a true factor in this game. And just want to remind everyone, this game's going pretty good, nice little long, but this is a two-game series, not a best of three, not a best of two, a two-game series. There will be a second one, and uh, we'll see who can take the first win, the first point of this ADL Season 2. Yeah, absolutely. We'll see what happens right now as we do jump into the game in just a couple of moments here. There we go. G is called. Bane is jumping back into it. So I want to thank everyone again for joining us here on the American Dota League. Game number one here, but two game series like you mentioned, and some fights could be breaking out here soon in just a second. They merely pulled out the Moonlight Shadow there, thinking they were going to have a fight that can keep on going, but they didn't really make anything happen with it. Now they're toying with the idea of either committing to doing the rush or not. They know that they're probably seen. There's a rocket. So, you know, they're not fooling anyone. They're kind of just slowly waiting things out. Oh, and Desperation Arrow will catch on Willies, but I know they're not going to make a move on this. They're going to wait. <laughs> Arrow is stolen, shot right back. Tornado from up the hill. What? They pulled out the Exorcism. Oh no. And they're gonna use it on the ancient. They've gotta go in now, I think. They can't yeah, they gotta go make waste. this work. 
They are going to head right into the Ancient Sira. They excuse me, the Roche Pit. And, and this will go down very quickly with the Exorcism Spirits. Sunstrike is going to fly. They've got to commit. Roche is getting low. Relic ready to EMP. Tornado is not available. They will take Roche. They will take the Ancients. Now the fight might break out. No, everyone from Ban Earth is backing off. And Death Prophet finally decided to say, listen, we're going whether you guys like it or not. I'm using my Exorcism. We're going to try to take this motherfucker down. So let's go. They do that they just it. thing right there. They got it. They got the power of the Aegis on hand now. They're going to look to push down this mid lane. They want a second set of racks. They even still have the tier 2 tower here available if they want it. Same goes for the top lane. So surprisingly, this heavy push lineup still has a couple, couple of towers they can take down for themselves, even though they've already taken one racks. As you can see, the Nyx Assassin already infested up, waiting for the proper initiate time. But they're going to play it very cautiously here. They don't want to throw anything away and allow a glimmer of hope for this band or spirit team. Yeah, this is something they maybe should have done a little while ago. They, they kind of tried to focus on that bottom racks for a while, and, and realistically, they should have popped the Exorcism for Tier 2s and made sure they really couldn't defend against it. So they're going to head top instead. Seven's going to grab an Invis rune. They might go to Radiant's that top lane and go for that top Tier 2 tower to do some split push or just take the Ancient Sack. They have the Aegis, but there's no need to rush. They still have six minutes with it, and after that six minutes is up or, you know, when it gets around to five or four minutes, then they have to be a bit hasty, I think. You still have a couple items that can come up for the Lifestealer. He's still sitting on 1,000 gold, the A-Blade. He'll get to something soon, I'd imagine. There's a four staff now coming out for us as well, who is not going to go for that right-click build eventually. He is going to continue to stay in that support capacity. He has the mech. He's got the four staff coming his way now, as you can see. And uh, it really comes down to when are they going to pop this exorcism? Are they going to go for the tier two? Are they going to go for the set of racks? And, and that, that's really their decision. We'll see what happens. I think they've been waiting out. Now it's finally online. Now they can make use of it. So I wouldn't be surprised if now they try to congregate together and make a push happen. They want to, you know, they have the momentum. The, the wave is on their side. They, they want to keep it going, though. They don't want to get the opportunity for the Slark now to build up a little bit of extra excess farm for himself. BKB is already complete, but look at that. I mean, 3.3k available to him. So now he can look to building some damage and I mean you got to get this done you want to nip this in the butt now and I think I mean they're making a push and happen in the bottom lane but I would hope to expect they make a rotation possibly from the bottom and go for some more towers on the outside yeah it, it never hurts to have more money I absolutely agree with you and, and, and Slark is gonna get dangerous soon I mean he is gonna start getting items in fact he picks up a belt of strength that's gonna be for that bash but here we go and pales up really getting caught out big pickoff immediately buying back BKB and Bricks getting wrecked with the exorcism there's the moonlight shadow to disengage with the tornado coming through hitting up EMP a blade's gonna fly clockwork getting forced out nice play there now the circle wards catching out Cecil he does have that Aegis mind you Mech's gonna keep everyone alive for banner spirit Bricks getting caught out of position Osiris and Oz are doing what they can. They take the set of racks. They might back off now. Go for the tier two tower. There's nothing left for them here as they back their way out of the base. Head to the low ground. They've succeeded in what they wanted to accomplish. They use it with just brute force and the ages. They get the racks. They get out of there. I love that cute little play that Banner Spirit does have, though. The jump in by Clockwork Wall, four staff out, and then you drop the wards right inside the cog wall and just put Sleasel through hell. It did force him to lose Dyer's the Aegis, but, you know, attack. that's something they have to work with. And, they're, you know, it's a tool they have in their arsenal now to fight out Osiris Gaming. But regardless, Osiris, get the Rex taken down. They'll pull back. Dyer's we'll get a run back now. They'll wait attack. out for the Exorcism to be available again, and maybe they'll look to push into the next lane. Yeah, and I feel like... I feel like Ban Earth kind of knew that was inevitable, so they're not too distraught by losing that set of racks. And Brix is, he's being very aggressive as they have this smoke uh -oh. and seat gang going. Fan of Soya not able to catch anybody out, getting revealed just a bit too close to that Death Prophet, who is way too speedy to deal with. She now has a Shiva's Guard. They're going to try to force a Tier 2 Tower. If this fight goes poorly for Ban Earth Spirit, they are in fact going to lose GG out, I'd say. They might not even stay here. This is a questionable decision at the very best. Roaming through his Oz, looking for an arrow, jumping in, coming out the infested, blink coming through from the Nyx Assassin. Relic is done. He's down for 80 seconds. Now there's the hook shut in as well. Briggs pops the BKB. Two down already. A double kill for Sleasel. There's a third going through as they lose the Slark. TP's coming out from Nave. Now they'll push down mid, take the tier two tower. Maybe a second set of racks and maybe the game all together, yep. Kyle Guy. And how convenient the exorcism now back up wasn't even needed in that fight you know banner spirit knew that that's their best chance while the exorcism's down but as you can see not even that's gonna matter now they're gonna push forward she'll go ahead and probably pe press the r button momentarily there it goes now they're gonna try to take down the tier two the tier three and maybe even looking to move in some racks because we already know that this slark has no buyback i'm sure the same story with relic yep no buyback available this is an easy rack yeah absolutely fortification is going to be used but it's it's got to be used at this point in time or they got to try something to get 
is pushed pushed off the base, and it, unfortunately the Raxes will go down. Banner and Spirit, they're looking to be two Rex down here in just a couple of moments. Still 26 seconds for that Slark to come alive, and that's going to be a problem. They'll back off now. They still need that Tier 2 top to take down. But that'll be the last tier two, and then of course the last tier three instead of Rax to follow shortly thereafter. Moonlight Shadow, they want to re-engage though. They might jump right on top of this yellow player. This clockwork four staff nightmare is gonna go. Fiend's grip might come up. Nice force out coming through from Phantom Soyan. He's gonna get Yules up there. Is the Fiend's grip gonna fly through? Nate getting blown up. Two hits, one from the Vendetta, one from the Life Stealer. Phantom Soyan, he's ghost sceptered up, but that's only gonna help for so long. Wow, a lot of damage coming through. Phantom Soyan stole the exorcism. Doing work on Sleazel, they've got to back off. They lose Sleazel, and now they are maybe thinking about this as a bad engagement. Guanzo getting mecked up, they lose one for one. Phantom Swan barely alive. Relic now backing his way out of there, looking for potential engagement. Seven, no exorcism for six seconds here, or excuse me, 36 Radiant's seconds. Sunstrike's gonna fly attack. way off the mark. Guanzo blinks away, just trying to avoid it, but nice steal coming out from Goody mm -hmm. to pick up the exorcism. Yeah, no, fantastic job. That was definitely the only reason they were able to get them out of the base and do that heavy hitting damage to take down Sleasel in the end. But regardless, Rack set number two has been taken down and now all pressure will be on this top lane. Banispert still holding this one out, feeling like there might be a small window of opportunity for him to get back in this one. But man, I don't know. Sleasel's doing serious work, man. This guy is so badass. He puts the laughter in manslaughter. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Life Stealer has just been doing some fantastic work. Uh, might even be considered a surgeon in this game right now. Of course, the Death Prophet does pick up the bots, so split pushing now is a possibility. Jumping right into the base, exorcism, taking a tier 4 tower if there's a creep wave there, obviously. They need to work on this tier 2 tower top, though. It's low and it's available for the taking. It's ready to go, it's ready to be brought down. Eight. Seven looking forward as he's pushing with the Crypt Swarm and all. And I, I imagine we'll see Osiris use this as their next objective. They can wait for Roshan, but it's still not that close to being up here. So tier two tower potentially, and then go from there. Bricks has to be careful. He's really close, and there he goes. Seven steps through, kind of sees it briefly, throws out the ping, but the quick pounce will get him away. But yeah, they're going to slow siege out this top lane, push it all the way into the racks conveniently. The other lanes are already pushed in. You can see the bottom already making its way into the base itself, and they're just going to conveniently stroll themselves down, you know, swagger walk, I guess, if you will, with a Death Prophet exorcism available, ready to go. She is... A mighty fine tank herself, I do say so. Ma Ma the ship is guarding the heart. You're not going to be able to focus down this Death Prophet. It's just, can we survive this exorcism onslaught? And honestly, really, they, they haven't been able to this entire game. I mean, yes, you have a couple of Ghost Scepters up, and that's fantastic, but really, it's just the rest of your team is getting slaughtered. The BKB's not doing Radiant's anything for the Slark, but he does have Shadow Dance, and it is level 3. He also has a Skull Basher now, but is that going to really help against the Life Stealer who has the Pistol Blade and the Salt Curious that he just finished up? So that's it's going to be a tough one, man. Yes, it is. It is indeed. This is a nice, lengthy, girthy match for our first Game 1 match mod. I really like it. But uh, here we go. Slow Siege continues here in the bottom lane as they pull the trigger. Exorcism flies. Tornado EMP to try to shut her down, but she's got plenty of mana to work with, man. That ship is very helpful. Blinkin' Hex, what happened to Shadow Shaman? He's out of there. Immediate jumping coming out from Egg Roll. He gets two with the cogs, but the quick leap out coming out from Rana will save her. But man, in the backdrop, as you can see, serious work coming out. Relic trying to get him out. Killy's eating a lot of damage right here. Bricks should be able to clean him up with ease. Sunstrike to fly out. They're on the run right now. And wow, look at this. Banner Spirit holding the hill in the meantime here. Even Sleasel, wounded on the backdrop, forced to waddle himself away. One of the best fights I've ever seen for a team comes out from Banner Spirit. That defense was, was absolutely magnificent. They couldn't get too far in there. Of course, the Bane's Fiends group got canceled by the Clockwork Brilla, mm -hmm. got forced out the way anyways, just to make sure he didn't get got on. He was able to throw out some more abilities later on in the evening, or into the fight, excuse me. Two man cogs coming through from Half Fried Egg Roll, catching people out. The Ghost Scepter's making sure that that uh, ultimate doesn't do too much work. And of course, the Shadow Dance on top of that. The Ghost can't target that Shadow Dance unit. So. Mm -hmm. That means that uh, Ban Earth Spirit, they lose one, they take one, and now they have to, of course, continue to defend, but they're not ready to give up just yet. 43 minutes in, this game's still going on, and yeah, a good one to start the fourth course, the ATL season, two day one series off mm -hmm. with really good stuff so far. I want to say that, and they could prove me wrong here in this next hopeful defense, I feel like the big reason they were able to hold the hill on that one was just the fact that Rubik still had Exorcism available, and he got to use it, and it got to be a big factor for them. Now, we'll see if that's the case or not. He doesn't have it any longer, obviously. Set has a Sacred Arrow available in case, you know, he can happen to 
catch a lingering bane or what have you and try to shut him out from making something happen. But Osiris looking to make something happen themselves. Pop the smoke here in the uh, mid lane, looking to make the wrong rotation up to the north with the infest already going in case they are happen to be spotted out by a lingering ward. But they're going to just go again at this bottom lane. They know that Rubik does not have the exorcism this time. Some skills may still be on cooldown, but Shao Shaman still has the wards available for this next push. Yeah, Willie's is actually going to catch out, of course, to the... Uh, oh, no. Oh, oh no Fiend's nice. Grip? Oh, oh, no! He canceled it. No, Hookshot coming through. Arrow on Guanzo. He's silenced up. Brick's getting a bladed. He dark packed the Abyssal Blade. Now Guanzo's up in the air. Relic will fall first. The first casualty. Brick's getting bashed up. He'll fall next. The War Trap is up a bit too late. Relic buys back. Fan of Soaring getting caught out. Exorcism doing work. Hex is up a nave. You're killing yourself just by standing there, my friend. Double kill coming out. Finally, the GG is called. Almost a good fight going the way of Ban Earth Spirit. But they're going to clean up Relic for a second time go for the tier 4 tower go for broke not even necessary they take the kill they take the ancient they take game one great dominating game first one for Osiris I mean banner spirit wanted to hold that one but it's just they couldn't quite get back into it so Osiris pretty much took control of the whole game the Sleasel man doing serious work as their hard carry building in so much farm to work with and just being the heavy hitter for the team and of course they always had that sweet death profit to fall back on with that heavy pushing dominance the silence doesn't you know hurt to have either so good work from them but this is a two game series we'll see if uh ban or spear can even things up in game number two yeah absolutely we are going to take a quick break here jump into the second match of the evening once again this is the american dota league it is season number two day number one brought to you by steel series presented by high ground tv which of course is myself Mott 32 you can follow me at twitter.com slash Mott 32 with me as Kyle Guy. You can follow him at twitter.com slash Kyle Guy. Make sure you follow High Ground TV at twitter.com slash High Ground TV and American Dota at twitter.com slash American Dota. So we'll take a quick break and jump into the next game in just a second, guys. Stick around, everybody.